So this is a game plan from my time with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is a game book with the game plan in it. Today we're going to talk about how to develop a game plan going into a game. Great for quarterbacks, great for coaches. Coming up right now. Hey everybody, welcome to Elite Athletes TV. I'm Mike Pulaski, former pro quarterback and quarterback coach here at Elite Athletes TV. If you like quarterback play, if you like talking about game plans, if you like talking about schemes, plays, anything having to do with football, please subscribe, ring that bell. That way you get notified every time we have new content coming out. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to learn about how to develop a game plan going into a game and leave me any comments down below. Love to hear your thoughts. Today I want to talk to coaches because I've seen a lot of stuff online about developing a game plan going into a game, whether you're a peewee coach, a high school coach, a college coach, or an NFL coach, you have to be involved in putting together the game plan. And when it comes to developing a game plan, there's really two trains of thought. One train of thought is I have to have a play for every possible defense, every possible situation, and have something for anything that might possibly happen in the game. To illustrate that, I'll tell you a little story. Some of you may know, I'm also a college football broadcaster. And so I have been calling college football games for 20 years now, both on TV and on radio. And when Jeff Tedford, who was considered an offensive guru uh, in his early days at Cal, was the head coach at Cal, I went in one time and talked to him before the game, as broadcasters do. You sit down and have a conversation with the head coach. And I knew Jeff really well, obviously, because Cal's my alma mater. And I asked him, I said, so what do you think? Are the players ready? And he looked at me deadpan and said, oh, I never worry about that. I'm only worried that we have enough in the game plan so that we can handle everything. And it shocked me as a player, former player, to think about that, that the, not being concerned about the chemistry of a team, whether they're ready to go, where they're at emotionally, but being worried more about having enough plays in the game plan. You can see Jeff Tedford's game plan. He would go into games with anywhere between 140 and 170 plays on his ready sheet. And I asked him about it, why so many plays? And he said he wanted to have something for everything he might possibly see. Here's my issue with that school of thought. You only have so many reps to practice your plays. And you only have so many days in a week to get ready for an opponent. And so how many reps can you get with each play against how many different looks you're going to see from that team? Because to be truly efficient at a play versus a look, you have to run it several times. Now, you may rep this play several times, you know, maybe 50 times between camp and preseason and during the season. But not getting the looks that you're going to see against the team that you're going into face makes it difficult to play at full speed. And so I am a huge proponent of playing at full speed. And what that means is if you have too many plays and you have too many guys thinking about plays and what they're supposed to do on each play and too many things to remember, you're going to have blown assignments. And blown assignments kill offenses quicker than anything else. And so Jeff was a great coach, had great offenses every year he was at Cal. That was his style. He liked to have a ton of plays on his ready sheet so that no matter what happened during the game, he had an answer for it. Problem is, at the time, you were running 60 to 65 plays, maybe 70 on a great day if you in a regular football game. And so if you have 173 plays or 150 plays and you're only going to run 65, you've got more than double the amount of plays that you could actually potentially call in a game. And that is a ton of learning, especially for a college athlete. Now in the NFL, where it gets a little more complicated, complex, you have guys who have been around football a lot longer, can handle different variations, can think on the move maybe a little bit better, then maybe you can get a little heavier in your game plan. I know going into games with Tampa, we'd have somewhere between 70 and 100 plays at the ready. And so that's a lot of plays, but you have guys who are working 10 hours a day, studying offense, looking at film, going over plays, doing walkthroughs, going to meetings, getting ready for games in college. At the time, I think they had a 20 hour rule. And so you have 20 hours a week to be able to install that. 
That said, that's very complicated. If your guys can handle it, then you know you're prepared going into a game, and that's one way. The way I like to do it is I like to slim everything down. I want to run plays that are going to be as efficient as possible. And so to kind of illustrate that, I'll tell you a story about Mike Leach. Mike Leach and I have become friends. He came on my outdoor show several times, and I got to know him really well. And Mike Leach is an offensive genius. Between he and Hal Mummy, coming through the air raid system, you've seen the success that he's had year in, year out. He understands the game of football. He understands offense. Mike Leach goes into a game with, I believe it's like 35 plays. And they all have a bunch of options off them that are decided by receivers, kind of finding open space and running to green grass. But he doesn't go in with a super overloaded playbook. Matter of fact, take a look at Mike Leach's play call sheet. Now, compare that play call sheet to the play call sheet from Jeff Tedford or from any other coach that loves to put as many plays as possible on that call sheet. And think about, as a player, how much easier it is to play off of Mike Leach's play sheet and play fast. And his offensive success is unmatched. Now, they don't have a ton of running games. They, they, I mean, they may go into a game with four, maybe five running plays out of 35, but they use them as a counter to that passing system. And so if you only have 35 plays to remember as a player, as an offensive lineman, and you know a bunch of those are the same pass sets, you can play really fast. You're not guessing about what you're doing. You're not guessing about scheme. You're not trying to figure out, you know, who do I go after? Where's my read? Who am I blocking back to? None of that stuff. As a quarterback, you're not thinking through all the different reads, concepts, coverages, everything else that you're going to be faced with. You're just playing fast. And that's why Mike Leach has been able to throw for miles every season is because they can play fast with a high-octane air raid offense spread the ball down the field, get the balls to the hands of the athletes, and let them go because they can play fast. Now, as a player, like I said, I was a big fan of the slim down the playbook and play fast rule, but I also wanted to have enough in the game plan. I don't need everything covered, but I need a couple things covered. I need to know that I have stuff that'll be cover two, cover three, man, blitz, um, goal line stuff. And so there are specialty plays that you add in. I'm, I'm somewhere, I'm on the, the slimmer end of the playbook. I think that I've seen some coaches talking about, you know, cutting it down to six plays or 10 plays or 15 plays. That, that's a little slim for me. But I think having two different styles of plays. One is a play that has an option versus several different looks. For instance, the smash route. I love it. Did a, a video on it. If you want to see it, I'll put the video up here. But the smash route, you can run that versus cover two, and that corner becomes a real quick option. You can run it from trips. You can run it from twins, two by two. You can run it from a bunch of different sets and have an option versus everything. Versus man, corner's a great route, or the runaway on the outside receiver's a great route. If you have it versus cover three, you're getting vertical, pushing people out. You can have the sit down or get the back, work something on the backside, tag a backside route, so it has an answer for a lot of different looks that you're going to face. Those kind of plays that have answers are main stays in the system. Those plays you carry into every game. So you practice those out routes, curl routes, four vertical, three vertical, um, your play action stuff, and you carry those from week to week, and you can just get back to the same play from different formations, different motions, but have the same reads for quarterbacks, same blocking schemes for the big guys, and same outside of one guy maybe moving in motion, you can have everybody running the same routes from the same spots. And so there's not a lot of new learning. That's about 80 to 85% of your playbook for me as I develop game plans going into the game. You have it set. You're ready to go. You practice them every week. You know what they are. Then you have specialty plays. If you get blitz look, if you get the 46 or the bear defense, you have to have an answer for that. If you're getting some kind of Pressure look, a team that loves to run a bunch of man. Some specialty stuff where you're going to use picks, rubs, different kind of routes, wheel routes that are going to win versus man that could be big gainers. So you have to have those specialty plays in. 
like I said, you have to have goal line specialty plays in because you want to get different looks down the goal line because it's so compressed when you get down there that it can be very hard to score. So a couple run plays, specialty, a couple pass plays, specialty. And then you have plays that are tendency breakers. So if every coach has plays that they like to go to, and in my game plans, I put in there to make sure that I'm breaking tendencies every now and then, change it up. You know, a lot of teams, you watch them, you can almost predict they're going to run screens on third down, right? Or draws, inside draws or traps. Well, that's a tendency. you got to break that. A lot of teams are going to throw four verticals when they go third and long because they want to give the quarterback an option. Well, that's a tendency. you got to break that. So tendency breakers as well in that specialty package. And then you're going to have trick plays, right? The fun play. When Steve Mariucci was our offensive coordinator at Cal, he used to love to have a couple of trick plays in the bag, ready to go for every game. And so as players, we were looking forward to that stuff. We ran the fumble ruski twice while I was there. Um, and, and having those trick plays, I think, makes the game incredibly fun. Uh, and then you want to have stuff that you can take advantage of defensive tendencies. So we talked about breaking your own tendencies. You want to be able to take advantage of defensive tendencies. If you know a team loves to go cover two on first down, you can break your tendency, throw on first down, and attack their tendency – by running something out that beats cover two. It can be three verticals. It can be smash routes. It can be dagger. Anything that's going to beat that cover two look, you can run it. And so have those things set after watching film and understanding a defense so that you have those tendency breakers for the defense. And once you have all that set in place, you run it during the week. You go over and you rep everything that you're going to, that you're going to run versus every look that you're going to get. And then you talk to your quarterback and ask him what he likes, what he doesn't like, talk through some of the rough spots, find out what sticks out in his mind, talk to the receivers, what they like, do they understand everything, make sure everybody's on the same page. And then as a coach, if you slim it down even a little bit more then to the stuff that you didn't like, didn't work out during the week, didn't run very well during practice, and run the stuff that you're good at. And when you start running the stuff that you're good at, that your team knows that they can play fast that's when you will be most successful. Now, I don't think six plays or eight plays or 10 plays is enough, but I think going into a high school game with somewhere between 30 and 60 plays maybe, with a lot of those being, you know, you can get 10 plays in the quick game. You can get, uh, your running game could have 20 plays in it that have similar looks, similar styles that doesn't take a whole lot of new learning. You could have something off a slide protection or a half slide protection that only the routes are changing for the receivers. And it doesn't have to be super complicated if it all stays within the same system, same train of thought, so that guys can run it fast. Going into a college game, you're going to want to have somewhere between 40 and 75 plays. Those guys should know it. You have a longer camp. You have a lot of reps. In the NFL, it's all about what your guys can handle. And that's the biggest trick. As a coach, know what your guys can handle. And if they're super intelligent, super smart, not making mistakes, you can load more on there to give yourself some options. But if they're not playing fast, if they're making mistakes, if they're blowing things out there, then slim it down and let them play fast. Because playing football at three-quarter speed so that you have more plays in the playbook doesn't make any sense at all, ever. I would rather go into a a game with 10 plays that I could execute extremely fast than going in with 60 plays that I could only execute at three-quarter speed. Because when you play at three-quarter speed, you get beat, and that's it. So my thoughts on a game plan, every week in the Arena League when I was playing, and I would go in every Monday and talk to my, he was my offensive coordinator, became a great head coach, he was a great coach, loved playing for him, Ed Hodgkiss. But he'd have anywhere between 60 and 70 plays And I'd be like, well, we're going to run tight end pop three times. We're going to run toss five or six times. We're going to run hitch five or six times. We're going to run storm. We're going to run pig. We're going to run some kind of smash. So we've just cut out about 25 plays in that game. We've only got about 35 left. So let's cut it down to 35 more plays, and then we're done. And that way we can execute at full speed. That was my thought. Let's coach to the weakest link in terms of understanding and playing fast, and your team will play fast. Appreciate you watching. Remember, subscribe to the channel. Ring that bell. That way you get notified every time we have new content coming out. Please give me a thumbs up. 
if you have a better feel for how to prepare a game plan now. And leave me a comment down below. Tell me how you prepare your game plans. Tell me if you want any more information on kind of the thought process going in or how to watch film in terms of developing game plans. But I will catch you next time. That's my thoughts. Get your game plan ready, and let's get ready for football.